never see any God like you. I never see any God like you. I never see any God like you. I never see any God. Sing it again. I never see anyone like you. I never see any God like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see any God like you. I never see I never see any God like you. Can I see you wave those hands to the left, to the right, and give him praise? Let's give him some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you are shaking your body. Uh-uh. Some of you, your bodies, you are not shaking your body enough. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ah, ah.
way mama and others are doing it here tonight. We are going to bring it down a little low. So when I say, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, you come down. When I say, Father, Father, you come up. Are you ready tonight, church? Enjoy yourself. You are in the house of your father. Are you ready? Say, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka. Father, Father, Father. One more time. Say, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka, Tere Moka. Father, you are God.
something in your hand. Make sure you hold something to lift him up tonight. Make sure you hold something. Even if it's your phone, make sure you hold something in your hand. Tonight. Hey, say something in your hand, something in your hand, something in your hand, something in your hand, something in your hand. Can I see what you're holding tonight? Something in your hand, something in my hand, something in my hand. Say, we be in the air. 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 Okay, bring it down now. We are going to be a little prophetic tonight. The team says shift. Something have to shift. Hallelujah. So we say, oh yell on my head, oh yell on my head, oh yell on my head, oh yell. So when the anointing comes, when the oil come upon you, something we have to change. So before our daddy begin to declare, let's begin to declare on our heads. Are you ready tonight? Say, oh yell on my head, oh yell on my head, oh yell on my head. Ice. We do like this. Increasing my hands. Yes sir. Increasing my hands. Increase in my hand. The Lord will give increase to somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Increase in my hand. Increase in my hand. Say, speed to my feet. 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 All the glory must be unto the Lord in the Hallelujah. Your God is good.
like this, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer, my healer. We are going to call him the shifter, the shifter. You are the shifter, the shifter. Yeah, something is shifting. The shifter. Hey, everybody, the shifter. One more time, say. somebody tell your neighbor we have just uh, we are just starting we are just starting we have not started tell your neighbor we have not started praise God somebody praise God somebody tonight is termed the night of praises galore praise God somebody so which means we are going to be praising God I'm praising God and praising God. Praise God, somebody. I'd like to welcome you to Kingdom Fest 2023. Come on, people. I'd like to welcome you to our convention. Hallelujah. Amen. Who knows the theme of this convention? The shift. So which means as you are dancing... God is shifting something in your life. Praise God, somebody. And as we're dancing, and as we're finishing to rest for a while, our father in the Lord, our grandfather, is just stepping in with his lovely wife. Praise God, somebody! Hallelujah! All the way from New York City, our father is in the house. Praise God, somebody! We'll bless the name of God for who he is. We worship the King of Kings. You're welcome to the Kingdom Fest 2023. If your hands are not too busy, keep clapping for our father, our grandfather. All the way from New York, I'm sure my father and the Lord will introduce him properly. Let's welcome our father. Let's welcome our father and our mommy. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. It is praise galore. The Lord is here already. So I'd like to welcome you on behalf of uh, my father, my father, the bishop, Bishop um, Felix Owolabi, and of course on behalf of our mama, um, Dr. That's Reverend. Miss, Reverend Dr. Mrs. Um, Margaret Timitayo Aduni Felix Praise God, somebody. So it's praise galore from now till Sunday. So God is here. Hallelujah, somebody. Now we're just going to rest for a few minutes, which of course we have rested. It's time now to continue to praise God. Somebody say praise God. You see, it's at this point that ministers of God are coming in. Let us welcome our father in the Lord, Bishop Fanny Lola, as he makes entrance into this place right now. Hallelujah, somebody! There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift. There's going to be a shift. Somebody say shift. Uh -uh. Somebody say shift. All those disadvantages in your life. Say shift. Hallelujah, somebody. I'd like to call on another minister to take us into the presence of God. Uh, the Bible confirms the fact that in, he, he habits the praise of his people. Are you ready to praise this hour? Hallelujah, somebody. Let us welcome Minister Sheyi 
Ade Gunle. Right? Hallelujah, somebody! Come on, give him praise. 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 Give him praise!
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let us all give Jesus a clap offering. Just give him a clap offering. Just give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to welcome our Father in the Lord, the set man for Faith Triumph Ministries International. And we are truly international. Let us welcome our Father in the Lord. I call him my Father, my Father. Bishop Felix Owulabi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, let all rise up on our feet and give to the King of Kings one minute clapping of it to the everlasting Father. To Hallelujah. The ancient of the Hallelujah. The God was who is forever be. The most dependable father, the most reliable father. Hallelujah. The most, father, the most glorious father, the most gracious God. Hallelujah. The unchangeable changer, the unshakable shaker. The risen for the Hallelujah. The God, the the Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God accept your offering. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated in the wonderful presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, quite up to 2018. So among the people like this, and my father is in the Lord. Everything. Because but 2018, he said, son, be what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. And he said to me, he said, at my presence, be at liberty. Amen. Because some people, when their father are around, that's why they want to play boss. Until you are given, let me tell you, we may be age mates, yes. Can I tell you, we can even be classmates. We can never be grace mates. That is true. We are not grace mate. And the truth is this. What we don't know. I don't know what I'm talking to, Pastor. Your father may not have one jacket. He may not have ten members in his church. But the grace that we carry to the nation is upon him. Yes, yes sir. Yes. If you don't know how to honor him, you'll just be, you, you just be, you just be trouble. Yes. And uh, begin to defend your failure. Instead of passing message, you are passing your failure, defending your failure, defending your error. And there is going because just have a, all of us, we have a space. We have a limited space on this planet Earth. We have a limited space in time. We have a limited space. If so, there's a waste, it has gone forever. But if you make good use of every moment, it's a seed. And it's waiting for you. So every time you are in the presence of your father, no matter what you need or what you know, you better pick at it. Because better things it is. I'm telling you. Because majority, can I tell you? Majority of those who do, do, flesh muscle. They are just all they know was the past truth. I always tell you, there is something greater than the truth. And what greater than the truth is the whole truth. If you just know what is the past truth, the present truth may not be available to you. And it's the grace that makes part the present truth available to you. Yes. You are, you are, the past truth just built doctrine and religion out of it. And you know that God has gone there. It, it has moved. Yes. That was, it's the same God told Abraham, go and kill your, go and kill your son. Thank you, Daddy. It's a shift. <laughs> and you don't know that that's a shift. And you are where God was. And that, that not as dangerous as being where God was upon me. And the shift has gone. He has shifted. Hallelujah. Amen. God told Abraham, Jackie also. And he had it and obeyed. 
and brought and zadu or everything. He said, go. But when he got there, God said, I have provided for you. If he had killed himself, it's all himself. Yes, because when he comes to the present truth, he's born out of revelation. He's born out of revelation. The pastor has just given you religion and doctrine. And you are sweaty as if you have arrived. And that was just only what you know. I, I, I remember, is, it, is, it, is it in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 18? That was a man there. They call him Aquila and what? And Priscilla. If you read from verse 24 to 28, this is man, Bible says, he was so eloquent, so fervent. Bible says, and when he's preaching, he's bold. Yes. And what he knew was just only about the doctrine of John the Baptist. That's just only what he knew. But this one of God, they were there, they were watching him. He said, This guy is good. But it's just one, one here or one highest gospel that he was preaching. He didn't know that the, the, the gospel has shifted from the John, the, John the Baptist and he has shifted to another dimension. Hallelujah. And that was what his preaching was. Every time he, he stood in the book, altar, everybody said, Hey, this guy has arrived. And it's just only about the John the Baptist. Bible says the word of God is a food. It's what? It's a food. It's a me. So you can be giving them me, to let me, but don't balance diet. Yeah. Eating parayam in the morning, even in the afternoon, and porridge in the night. I say, ah, I hate yesterday what? Parayam in the, in the morning, parayam in the evening. Even my wife gave me parayam in the afternoon. And you are bored. It's just maltrusion. The same food. It is, it is a bala- the word of God is a balanced diet. You have to give, otherwise, you just only one eyes. They are saying. So that our eyes of understanding may not be darkened. So that the life in Christ might make available unto all. God said, This is time for shifting. There must be a shift tonight. Yes. And there shall be a shift tonight. Amen. In your life. Amen. Why are we so too much about we are, we do everything we regionalize? When you come to religion, can you see that one? They will say, hey, my God, my Jesus. Yes, is everybody Jesus? Jesus Christ is not a religion leader. Can I tell you, Jesus Christ is not a Christian leader. He's not, he's not a Christian. Yes, you want to know. How can you just box, box Jesus Christ in one, in, one, in one corner and say, he's our leader? Ah, Dr. Ball, Jesus Christ, he owned everything. Yes. He's the owner of heaven and the earth. He's not just only the owner of Christian. As many that come unto him, he holds them. Yes. He, belo- he belongs to everybody. Yes, he's not just a God of religion. He's not a God of religion. God means many things to many people. He, he got to a point, some people, he met some to them. They say, Who are you serving? He said, We are serving an unknown God. Yes, you are still serving God. Because their eyes of understanding have been darkened. They need light. Church, we need light. We need what? Light. We need light. It's, when we are talking of light, I know Mary, the reason only reason why you come is for miracle and size and water. But this is time for seed. Amen. That will not just look for miracle, you will be the miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not just be the miracle, you will be the miracle. miracle. You will be the condit that conduct the miracle. That what God wants, he made us to be a conduit that conduct the light of gospel. He said, the kingdom and the power and the glory. Hallelujah. We are the kingdom, is we are the power and glory we follow. And miracle we follow. Yes. Hallelujah. That he got, can you imagine? Uh-huh. Let me tell you, when you assume the kind of light that God wants to assume, Satan will recognize you. The more we know, can I tell you, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, he said there are some demons. They are, they are class of darkness. 
Those demons will arrive in darkness. There's no prayer that can, no prayer can cast them away. We are that dark. Even Jesus Christ will not be able to cast them away. Why? Because of darkness. Wherever darkness is, they will thrive there. But when you turn on the light of your understanding, the beauty and the power of knowledge is light. Yes. It's light. When, you, when the light is really illuminated in your spirit, darkness will disappear. Even the demon of darkness, they, will have, they have no room to operate. No, it's not a prayer. The light is here. Yes. There are things you know and Satan run away from you. Yes. You know it. That's the light. Satan begins to run away from you. We, we are other. I will tell you. I will boast it. We are other. I pray ten, uh, uh, three days fasting and prayer. I, I smile. Because I know what is impossible. You, you assume a position of knowledge a light. The more they recognize that they, they, they know that they can't, they can't come to you. God told Moses, He said, Build me a tabernacle in the wilderness, not even where they are going. I said, But I have a pattern. Because the God of pattern, He said, I have what? A pattern. And He gave them the pattern. Bible says, As they follow the pattern, and as they completed the tabernacle, what happened? The glory soul. What so? Who pray for the glory? Because they follow the pattern. That's a level you assume. Satan knows that in this area, we can't touch it. They, they said darkness can't thrive there. Why? Because the light is there. Yes. Satan, you see, they said, oh boy. I'm preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just telling you that I'm happy that my father is in the house. I'm not preaching because I don't have a book here. I don't have anything here. I don't have anything here. I'm not preaching. I'm just saying I'm happy my father is in the house. And my mother is in the house. Can you celebrate? <laughs> Under this grace, not only that my life is thriving, the church of God is thriving. Not only that we are getting things done without stress. Yes. Things get to us. I always tell you, success will never come to you. Go to success. You go to, uh, you, hallelujah, thank you, my daddy. You go for it. But in this church, <laughs> that's how it's defined. Success always come to us. <laughs> always come. Because at times I say, God, what is it that I have done that make you like me this so much? That's only my prayer every time, God. I don't want to transgress that. Because I don't know. Because at times I see some blessings. I say, God, what caused this? People go, thank you, Daddy. We are a journey group. Thank you, Daddy. I, you don't want to celebrate my father, I will celebrate my father myself. I celebrate my father myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the body of Christ, that's an innumerable, numberless of compendium of possibility. But because we have them, we don't know how to assess them. And the time they use them, it gets us. I'm telling you, we have them. When the religion, every time they want to present God, they present God as true, wow. infinitely far. They go, hey, go, go! Christ didn't just come to come and die for us. He came so that he can reconstruct our understanding about God. He said, God, is a father. And they call him his father. So he, he came so that he can soak God to us. And he, he brought us out of multitude so that we can soak Christ to the, our world. Hallelujah. He gave up plans on. A different, I'm not, no, I'm not good there, I'm not preaching now. This is a father that I have. My father. You just say, 
He doesn't pray for me. He doesn't pray his father. Say, hey, 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 the name of Jesus. He says, son, it is well with you. Amen. Go and take over. Amen. Go and rule death. He will he spell it out so that you can hear what is coming to your life. He will not just jump past it. You will not know where amen is going. I say, amen. Amen. The same grace everyone has brought closer to you. Hallelujah. To dispense on us tonight. Hallelujah. To sift us. Hallelujah. From where we are to where we belong in this Hallelujah. And I know you are ready. Yes, sir. But before then, let me go into this man of God, graces in the house. Yes, sir. We want to thank God for the life of Pastor Emmy. Hallelujah. <laughs> One of our firebrand pastors upon this Monday, Pastor Ezekiah Eze. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You. Oh, we love you. All the way from Nigeria. Okay, Laura go slash a Laura go opposed to Baba Lala Omatayo. Hallelujah. He came purposely because of my wife's birthday. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the honor. Hallelujah. And here is my friend, Bishop B. <laughs> Hallelujah. Benjamin Ariel. Thank you, sir. Thank Hallelujah. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your love. He came this morning. He said, these three days, everyone has opened. Thank you for your life, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. This is our pastor, Pastor Olufo Wote. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you. This is a minister, Buki Taiwo. Thank you. Hallelujah. Minister Olani Tongsitavi. Don't think about that. Pastor Matthias Uwalabi, God bless you. Hallelujah. Pastor Olalunge, please come to the front. Why Hallelujah. This, come and help me shift this to this way. You have to be, yeah, please shift him to this way. Amen. 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 Pastor Moses of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Where is Pastor Mary? I'm looking at this. Yeah. Pastor Mary, where do, you, where do you hide? Pastor Mary, God bless you, brother. <laughs> My minister, Mr. Colette. Thank you. Okay, it's there. Amen. Amen. It's Lordship. Bishop Olumi Yuaojo. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Thank you for the Lord. And uh, I know it's on our flyer. It's Lordship. Bishop K. Fanilola. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. And my mother. Hallelujah. My mother. She understands <laughs> she, <laughs> she understand me within and without. On, 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 a, on, a, on a serious note, I don't, <laughs> I don't talk for long. Mommy, he said, he won't, he won't even let me explain myself. PM, take it over. And everything, I, tell, I can't go straight to my father. I go through her. <laughs> <laughs> even most of the time, most of the time. I, don't, I can't go. I'm telling you, I don't have that. Is that the truth? I, I never, even tell I'm talking now. I never had that boldness to go to my father, but I know where I go to. Call my mom, mommy. Said, it two sentences, get him done. Piam. And everything straightforward. Hallelujah. Said, Thank you, mommy. I love Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Give it up for Jesus. I Hallelujah. You. I love you. Media department, you have anything? Okay, please.
Right Reverend Dr. Julius Abiola is the presiding bishop of Christ Life Ministries Incorporated, based in Brooklyn, New York. The ministry has a global impact and outreach that cuts across several continents of the world. He is an anointed vessel of God with a divine mandate to raise men and women of uncommon destinies. His mission is to identify, train, and empower potential Christian leaders in character and power for the end-time harvest of souls in preparation for the return of the Lord Jesus. Bishop Julius Abiola is a sound teacher of God's undiluted word, a great theologian par excellence, one who loves to lead God's people in the act of pure worship into God's presence. He has been in the forefront of kingdom advancement in the city of New York, while still committed to attending the spiritual well-being of God's people, committed to his care for almost three decades. Bishop Julius Abiola not only teaches God's word, but he is also passionate about the physical well-being of ministers of the gospel. His passion gave birth to the Ministers' Well-Being Initiative, a medical outreach ministry to ministers. Bishop Julius Abiola is currently the presbyter of Calvary Grace Conference of Bishops in the North American region. He is married to Reverend Dr. Meltilda Abiola, his co laborer in the work of the ministry, and together they are blessed with a daughter, Joy Abiola. Brothers, Brothers and sisters, sisters let's, let's make welcome, welcome Bishop, Bishop Julius, Julius Abiola. Hallelujah. Please, let's lift up our hands and just worship this God like never before. Let's lift up our hands to worship this God like never before. Worship team, can you join me here? Can you help me? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's do it. 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 Lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up your hands to heaven. You deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hands in worship as we You deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. Somebody say, You are great. Somebody say, no one, no one, no one. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do me with so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. Oh.
heaven, everyone. Tonight is a special night. And God set this night up for you. He set this night up for somebody here. So get ready for something that God is about to do. Let us celebrate the world. Let's celebrate the world. Let's celebrate the world. In the beginning was the world, the world was with God, the world was God. The Bible says this same world was with God in the beginning. By him all things were made, and without him was nothing made that was made. He said the name is light, and this life is the light of men. He said the light shineth in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. No matter how dark it may look tonight, the light is shining. There is a shift. I said there is a shift. No matter how dark it is tonight, there is a shift. In the name of our Lord Jesus. And you are right in the plan of God for this shift we are talking about this week. Please, you may be seated. Let's get into the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, his lordship, I call him his royal priesthood. Bishop Felix Owolabi spoke glowingly about his mother. Glowingly. As if some of us don't have mothers too. We all have daughters also. So don't let somebody harass you. Wait, my mother is in the house. Somebody's father is in the house too. So let's get things done. As we are talking about his mother, the media people focused on her. That is not fair. That's not fair. But we are so blessed to be here this weekend. Uh, we don't go out for out of the church on Sundays. But first week of May, every year, whether it is Mother's Day, Uncle's Day, Auntie's Day, uh, Bishop Joe's Day, we will be here. That is the bond that we have. The Lord has blessed you so much. And we thank God for the people in Pakistan. I know they will be watching us at this time. We celebrate you. Last year, there was nothing like Pakistan church. Now we have Pakistan church. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Places where people are so fearful to go. I remember some years back, uh, we were talking and praying on this altar. And the Lord gave us a word about opening the door to the nations. I can't remember. I don't know if you remember. The door to the nations to uh, God's servant. And it just, it was something that we, I mean, to a natural man, how would this thing be? I've received many calls from Pakistan. But I love going to North, Northeastern Nigeria or Pakistan. I had never gone there before. I didn't plan to go to Pakistan. It was the last aim. I would rather go to India. And he came and told me Pakistan had opened up. Many more nations will still open up to you. They will come to you with their gifts in their hand. You won't struggle to enter nations. Some people are sent. Some people send themselves. And some other people are sent by God. But there is a difference. 
when God is in it, kings and princes will come to you with their gift in their hands. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, I have not started preaching. The man Saul contacted the man of God. And just after that, the Bible says that seven things happened in quick succession. Certain things will begin to happen in quick succession. Saul that borrowed money for the seer. The Bible says men who were religious people were going to offer sacrifice. The first thing was that when they saw Saul, they saluted him. There are three loaves of bread. They didn't give him one. They didn't cut one into two. They didn't do half or six or half foot long. Anybody who has visited Subway in half foot? They gave him two out of three. And somebody will wonder how will a man. They said he even got to a place, he began to prophesy. And they said, Is he also among the prophet? They said, Show us his father. That's a message for another day. Well, listen to me. I'll pray for you. We'll call it Father's Blessing on Sunday. But from now, something new is breaking forth. There is a shift. Listen, the shift is not because the theme is shift. It's not because the theme of this convention is shift. I feel it in the atmosphere as I enter the church. There is a shift. Amen. There is a shift. Amen. Listen to me. Take up wings and fly. Amen. We are secured. Your placement can never cause our placement. Amen. And anywhere we go, we'll be, we are just fine with being called the pastors of Bishop Obulabi and his wife. So go ahead. Do that which the Lord has placed in your heart to do. And the God of peace saturate your heart with peace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for taking care of my daughter for me. Hallelujah. Be, care be, be, be careful. One of the reasons why we are here this weekend is to celebrate her. Is this weekend your birthday? Yeah. But before we get to the 7th of May, where is Tofumi? Oh. It's my baby's birthday today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From three years ago, I said, you this single, the male girl. He says, sir, it's May 5, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. I celebrate all the graces in the house. I'm just excited. I won't take your time tonight. I'm just excited. If you don't know who we are celebrating this weekend, too bad, too late. But we, are, we do pink. See. Let's get some people jealous in the house. I celebrate all the graces in the house. Your lordships, thank you very much for coming, Bishop Ojo. Blessings to you. So nice to see you again. You look like he said, he's been to Nigeria and he's back. The man could not go to Pakistan. He went to Nigeria before election he ran. Come on inauguration, he didn't wait for. <laughs>
Tonight, let's get into the word, the word of God, the word of his grace. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, every minister, every pastor in this church, every worker. Thank you so, so much. Each time we are here, we are truly blessed. I would like for you to open your Bibles tonight to for the first chapter of Zechariah. The first chapter of Zechariah. Zechariah was a contemporary of Agai, the prophet. About the same time, they prophesied. And the key to that is in the first chapter of Agai, where he mentioned the two of them. They were contemporaries, just like Isaiah and Uzia were contemporaries. And it was a prophecy about a shift. There is something about Zechariah. Zechariah was a man that saw eight visions in one night. And none of those visions, you could, you could put any of those visions aside. Because they are heavy. They are loaded. In one night, starting from the vision of the matu tree, anybody remember? And now we'll be talking about the second vision. Tonight I will read from the, uh, l -l 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 listen to me, from the 16th verse. And I will read a little down and let's see how God will help us tonight. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, what you see is different from what he said. I would rather go for what the Lord has said than for me to go for what people have seen. I would rather go for it is written than to go for what a prophet said he saw somewhere. I would rather go for a sure word. He said, thus saith the Lord, the final arbiter in anything, any matter of faith, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. I am returned to Jerusalem with mercy. The key to the shift we are talking about tonight and this weekend is the mercy of God. If you can explain your success by the things that you do, you are a failure in disguise. I am successful because I did this, I did this, I did this, I did that. Real success can only be explained by one word, the grace of God. God said he's returning. He's returning. Listen to me is returning to Jerusalem with mercies. And he said, my house shall be built in it. Say the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Christ he had saying, thus said the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. The Lord shall yet comfort. There is comfort in the program of God. There is mercy in the program of God. In this shift program we are talking about, there is comfort in it, there is mercy in it, there is a rebuilding that is coming your way. It is the program of God. All things have passed away new things are in plans for you. They are in the hoping for you. Is that my cities shall be spread abroad through what? Through prosperity and are we yet comfort? Comfort here is not just talking about somebody who is money. It portrays being made Comfortable. It portrays a, a cities that where people live in peace. 
the peace of God that passes all understanding. In other words, it cannot be explained. It portrays the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God. Somebody tell your neighbor no shaking, no shaking. Tell your neighbor no shaking, no shaking. You have been shaken before by many things, but God said, I am bringing comfort upon Jerusalem. No shaking. But look at it. My city shall be built. This was a rebuilding of the cities. Because the cities had been built before here, before now. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61, where you look at verse 5, can somebody help me? Isaiah 61 verse 5, what does it say there? Let's go to verse 4. And they shall rebuild. The word they are rebuild. The word there is rebuild. Because those places were there before, but they had been wasted. Those lives are there before, but they had been messed up. Hopes that were in those lives before had been thrown in the garbage. But the word of grace is that God shall send helpers. He will send helpers who shall build, build, build again the whole waste places and they shall raise up the former desolations. We are coming to some here tonight. The shift is not just going to bring repair. The shift is bringing restoration. Are you listening to me, people of God? It doesn't matter how bad it is. God is bringing restoration. Amen. Because it is a shift. Where old waste places, they shall raise up the former desolation. Look at the word former there. Anything that is not glorious is no longer permitted. When the Lord spoke to us at the beginning of the year that it was going to be our year of glorious happenings. The Lord told me and said, and I said it in church, that anything that is not glorious is not permitted to happen. Anything that doesn't fit the description of this scripture because it said those old desolations, they are former. The former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of how many what? How many generations? The cities of God at this time had suffered defeat for many generations. They had suffered desolation for many generations. The people had become so used to desolation that they don't know what, what good life was all about. The place had been run down. Any king could just come and run down the people of God and take people into captivity. The Assyrians came the other day. They took the men from amongst the people of God, took them into captivity and brought their men to come and impregnate their wives so that they could give birth to the Samaritans. Anybody remember the Samaritans? When that which belonged to God's people had been taken over, 
Listen to me, people of God, as the Lord lived before who I stand. By the reason of this promise shift, everything that has been taken from you will be restored. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. It doesn't matter for how long because the Bible says uh, it the solution of many generations. The shift is repairing the desolation of many generations. Now, let's go, let's, go, let's go on to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. Because he promised that his city shall be built, his cities shall be built through prosperity and they shall spread abroad and the Lord will bring comfort to Zion. Then this is the key. Look at it in verse number 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, behold, how many horns? Four horns. I lifted up my eyes and saw four horns. This, were, this was the second vision of the night. The first vision of the night was the vision of the matu tree. This is the second vision of the night. He said he lifted up his eyes and what did he see? He saw four horns. Four horns. And I said to the angel that talked with me, what be this? In other words, what are these? You know, you know what? God is not, God, is, God, God will not be nervous when you ask him questions. I ask God questions. He's not nervous when you ask him questions. Our God is not like that God. God will not be nervous when you praise him. God will not tell you you praise him too much. Are you following? He will not say you are shouting on me too much. As a matter of fact, he enjoys my shout. Because one day he too will come and shout. And everybody will hear him. Because the Bible says, and the Lord shall descend. From heaven with a shout. If you are not used to shouting now, you better be used to shouting. And with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, he said, uh, those who are dead in Christ will rise for us. And those who remain are alive. He said, they shall be caught up with him in the air. God is not, he's not nervous. Your placement cannot make God to be nervous. Somebody following what I'm talking about? It's good to ask God questions. I asked him questions this morning. Our God is not a dead God. Psalm 115 says, Not unto us, O God, not unto us, but unto thy name give we praise. He said, Wherefore shall men say, Now, where now is their God? He said, Our God is in heaven. And he does whatsoever he wills, not in moves in. And he moves the whole world. He said our God is not like their gods. They have eyes they cannot see. They have mouth they cannot speak. He said if they have, yes, yes they have. And they cannot hear. But what does he say? He said those that make them, they are like them. So when we ask God questions, God is not, God doesn't feel bad. It's not like our earthly fathers that we cannot we cannot. <laughs> it's your birthday. Because the shift is coming by what? By mercy. And that shift is not that I'm shifting from her to you. The shift you are talking about is not. But look at it. So God is not, God is, is not, is not nervous. He's not intimidated by your questions. God is not an African man. Whose children will ask questions, I will say, shut up your mouth. So the prophet asked, he said, what are these horns? What be this? What is this? What is this? I 
And he said, the angel that talked with me said, these are the horns. These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. The horns that have scattered. There is, there is an ingathering this weekend. Everything that had been scattered, they are being gathered. Everything that had been lost, Amen. they have been restored. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, these are the horns that have scattered. If you have said they scattered Israel, after the division to, between, uh, into two kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, the northern kingdom was known as Israel. And within a short time, it was full of idolatry. Somebody will say it, is, it was because of the idolatry. But he didn't stop there. He said even Judah was scattered. Scattered. The horns that are scattered. The horns that are scattered. When you hear the word horn in, 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 in biblical theology, when you hear the word horn, the word horn stands for might and strength. If a particular horn will scatter you, it is something that is stronger than you are. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? The horn that will scatter you must be a horn that you don't, you, you, you don't have an answer to. You have tried everything in the book and it has not worked. And you have resigned to faith. Therefore, causing desolation of many generations, God said, it shall be rebuilt. Desolation of many generations. He said, these are the horns that are scattered. In other words, they stand against you. They resist you. They resist you from fulfilling destiny. Anything that has to do with what God is about to do, wants to do in your life, they stand against it. These are the horns that are scattered. But can I tell you something, people of God, no more, no more, no more. An end has come to desolation of many generations tonight in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. He said, these are the horns which are scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. It was a sorry case for Judah. It was a sorry case for the city of Jerusalem. It was a sorry case for Israel. Why? Because everywhere they turned, they were being oppressed. Everywhere they turned, they could not fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. Every time, where by the time they are getting out of one problem, another problem was coming. And it had become something that they were used to. But God said, there is going to be what? A shift. There is going to be a shift. And this weekend, God has brought to this place, this weekend, the next set of things. He said, but he said, and I said, what? That we, then, and the Lord showed me Four carpenters. The Lord showed me four carpenters. The devil came with four arms. And the Lord had what it takes to match the four arms. Because scripture says when the enemy comes, he said like a flood. Now, Listen to me, people of God. There are so many things that evils that oh, that the error of accentuation did to the Bible as we have it today. 
when the enemy shall come. Comma. It's not when the enemy shall come like a flood. The enemy doesn't have the power to come like a flood. The enemy only has the power to come. Who does he want to harass? He only has the power to walk, to come. Huh? Jesus said, the thief cometh not. He didn't say the thief cometh like a flood, not to steal. The thief cometh not, but to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. But when he came, he thought he was the only one who could come. But Jesus said, I am come. King James Version. King James Version. He said, I am come. He didn't say, I have come. I am come. That they may have life and have it more abundantly. So when the devil brought four horns, God brought four carpenters. He said, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then questions again. What have these people come to do? And he spoke saying, these are the horns, the same horns, which doth scatter Judah so that no man may lift up their heads. Sorry case. The people of God were so messed up that no man could lift up their head. They were so messed up that no man could lift up their head. He said, I lifted up my head and I saw four carpenters. But before that, no man could lift up their heads. No man could lift up their heads. For thou, O Lord, are the shield round about me. He said, you are the glory and the lifter, bishop of my head. Nobody could lift up their heads. They couldn't lift up their head. The joy of the people of God are cut short. They could not lift up their heads. In my culture, when somebody doesn't prosper and his mates are prospering, they will say, his head has not been lifted. But he said, these carpenters have come to fray them. Look at the word fray. The word fray is to can I, can I borrow the word to mess them up? To wreck them, to wear them out. The word frame actually means to wear out. And that word fray is the one that is used for a piece of clothing that is being worn out. Fray. The carpenters had come to take that which the enemy glories with and to mesmerize the enemy. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? There is a shift in the hair that will mesmerize your enemy. Amen. The carpenters have come. The carpenters have come. Amen. The carpenters have come. Amen. The carpenters have come. Good news. <laughs> the carpenters have come. Hallelujah. Good news. The carpenters are here. Hallelujah. Good news. The carpenters have come Amen. to fray all the hearts. Amen. Hearts. Amen. Yes, Lord. Is on my horn. My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The carpenters have come. Amen. Hallelujah. The carpenters are here. This weekend, the carpenters are here. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? 
an end has come to every operation of Amen. those arms Amen. that have messed up people's destiny, Amen. that have messed up people's lives, Amen. that will not allow people to raise their head. Amen. But the carpenters have come. Amen. Hallelujah. To free them. Because he said, my city shall be built. This time, not through struggle. Shall be spread abroad through prosperity. Amen. You have struggled all your years. An end has come to struggle tonight. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You have struggled all your life. And you have asked yourself, why is it that everywhere I turn, Something is blocking my way. That is before the carpenters arrive. Huh? Before the carpenters arrive. Can I tell you? The carpenters have come. They are here. Amen. Hallelujah. This weekend. Amen. The carpenters are here. Amen. He said they have come to free them, to wear them out. Because to terrify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Subdue. The strength of horns it is in their state of matter, which is solid. Huh? As solid as they are, will determine their strength of ones. But now he wants to make them like, like what? Like chaff. Psalm 1, from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, blessed is the man. Blessed is the, blessed is the man. Are you one of those men that are blessed tonight? Yes. Ah, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, that standeth not in the way of sinners, that sitteth not in the seat of scoffers. But he said, his delight is in the law of God, and there he meditates day and night. He said, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, bringing forth his fruit in his season, he says, his leaf also shall. Not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But verse 4 he says, but the what? What does he say in verse 4? Anybody? He said, but the ungodly are not so. Yes sir, they are like chaff that the wind. There is a winnowing of your horns tonight. The horns Amen. that have come against you. Amen. The carpenters have come. Amen. They have come here tonight Amen. to fray them, Amen. to dismantle them, Amen. to render them null and void Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The carpenters are here. And they are bringing a shift. They come with the word. They can come as the word of God. Listen to me, sometimes you don't need all the preaching. It may just be a word in the preaching. It was the word come that Peter had. Come, on the strength of come. Yeah? He didn't even put neighbor. Because if it was neighbor, it would be twice. Two words. One word. He did not even say, oh boy, come. He said, come. And on the strength of that word, the surface tension of water was messed up. And the guy began to walk on water. Listen to me, the carpenters are coming. This, they are here this weekend. It may be just a word that will knock off that thing forever. 
in the name of Jesus, your word must come this weekend. In the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, the carpenters, he showed me four carpenters. Four carpenters. Matching the number of the horns. Everybody are come to free them. To cast out. He will not just destroy them. He will cast them out also. They will cast them out. Cast out the horns of the Gentiles. Which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. What is the shift tonight? The shift is not to scatter. The shift is that all things that have been scattered will be gathered in. Amen. I see him gathering in this church. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Even if your health has been messed up, if your health had been messed up, it's been scattered by the horns of the Gentiles. God said, my city shall be rebuilt. I read something there, Bishop. He said, the Lord will set up a line over the land. And for a long time, I thought about that thing. Ah, why will he set up a line over it? The first thing in setting out in construction is the architect's lines. They will set up the lines. Anybody remember? In those days, we will use bamboo to do it. Or it's to set, when they say they set out, this building before it was built, they set it out. The architect's line was there. He said, I will build it myself. Tonight, I don't know how bad it has been. I'd like you to stand to your feet. Everything the carpenters need to knock off this weekend. Everything the carpenters have to knock off this weekend. In the name of Jesus. I want you to present it to the Lord. And the good news is the carpenters are here. Amen. The good news is the carpenters are here. Lift up your hands. Whatever thing you want the carpenters to knock off this weekend. It may be a sickness of, for many generations that they call chronic. Chronic hypertension. Chronic kidney disease. Chronic anything. As long as it's a desolation, whether it's a desolation of many generations or desolation of the now, we subject them to the judgment of the carpenters. Stick up your hands to heaven, everybody. Let's begin to pray. Zima laba kushata yarabo shade yerebo sekata. Pastor Matthias, get on, get on the on the drums, and get your mic mic on. And let the worshippers join us up here. The carpenters are here to free them. The carpenters are here to free them. Come on. Zibalabusha tabakoto bari alabusha na yalabasota. If you are sick in your body, wherever you are, I don't care for how long. Desolation of many generations have been dissolved here. The carpenters are here. The carpenters are here. Come on. Zima la bo shata ba kosi kede yere bo shekata. You are sick in your body. Please find your way here. 
God wants to deal with that here tonight. Yes, come, 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 come. Thank you, Mama. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's begin to worship the Lord. Let's begin to worship. I mean worship. I mean worship. Let's worship Him. That is why you are called Jehovah. Come on. If you are what seeking your body, you find your way here. Do. Come on. What you say you will do. Start to your face. Start to your face. And that is what you will do. That is why you are called that Jehovah. Is you are called is Jehovah. Rafa. Rafa. That is why. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called. Find your way here. One line. One line. One line. The what you say you gone. will do. What you say you will do. To free them. That is what you will do. To free them. Bishop Williams. That please tell us. You are called. Your Lordship. Please tell us. Let's please start to them. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. It's Jehovah Jireh. That is why, that is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. By the horns of the Gentiles. It's like your business enterprise is not responding. You have laid your hands on so many things, and none of them not worked. That is one of the manifestations of the horns of the Gentiles. 
The Bible says of that man, I quoted the scriptures in Psalm 1. When he said, blessed is the man. He said, whatsoever he does shall prosper. If all he does is to sell sawdust, ah, it will sell. If all he does is to sell, sell stones, the stones will what? Will sell. The other day, they were looking for ways of eradicating rodent infestation in New York City. Anybody heard about it? And do you know what? There is a particular kind of dog that they said all that they need to send away rodents is just the urine of the dog. Let the dog just urinate and sprinkle the, the house. Sprinkle the uh, urine around your house. So you won't see them. Even squirrel, all those indisciplined squirrels that will go, go about, you won't even see them. Talk less of seeing rodents. They are brought up. So if a righteous man will sell dog urine, sir, because whatsoever he does shall prosper. We are connecting that level of shit at this meeting. If you have any business enterprise, you have tried everything, it has not worked. It's like what is working for others, it's not working for you. The carpenters are here to fray that manifestation of evil in the name of Jesus. Stick up your hands to heaven. Stick up your hands to heaven. I will just make a pronouncement from here. Yes. You will raise that worship, uh, that song. You are great. Take it to another level. Let praise be crazy here after that. Are you listening? Stick up your hands. You have any business enterprise? Simple word. As you have desired in your hands. That made you to raise your hand. Be it unto you as you have desired. May the prosperity of the grace of God come upon that business in a special way. From this moment. By the word of the prophet. In the name of Jesus. Zika tapakoto break. You are great. You are great. Dimension of prosperity you are in the great. name of Jesus. You are great. So great.
carpenters are here. Yes. The carpenters are here. The carpenters are here. I hear the voice of the Lord. Daddy saying that a new strength has come upon you tonight. A fresh anointing has laid upon you when you step on this poop. He said the spirit of grace. God said not only will you be a strength to this body, but you'll be a strength to the body of Christ in general. Said the spirit of grace. The eyes of your understanding have been enlightened. For the hope of the calling that's upon God's people, said the Lord. I hear the nations is calling for the body in this house. I hear the voice of nations. Not a city, not a state, nations. And the nations, not only will they come, but the nations will bow before you. You will not bow before the nations. A new strength have come upon this poopy tonight. As daddy step on the poopy, the voice is echoing. The voice is echoing. And I hear the Lord say, as the voice is echoing, we have to build an altar tonight. An altar of giving. An altar of sowing. For the word that has been given tonight came from the throne of grace said the spirit of the living God. So tonight, the Lord wants us to sow. It's a feast that the angels are here. For these four days, each minister, each bishop, each apostle that step on this pulpit will be hearing the voice of God from their mouth because the carpenters are here. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Daddy, I saw you walking more. I saw you walking. And the Lord says, going to strengthen your life and give you longer days, said this, longer years, said the spirit of the living God. Because God's going to use you mightily also for the nations that are coming into this house. Are you all still here or they've gone back? Like, could we sing that you are great again? One more time. Are they all disappearing? One more time before we receive the offering. So let's get our offerings together. Don't forget, we need to sow into this ministry. Sow for this conference. Come kingdom first. Are you ready? To sow a thousand? To sow 500? To sow a million? Oh, y'all are not ready for millionaires in this house. Are we ready to sow into a kingdom of God for such a time as this? Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. I honor you. I honor Bishop Felix Owolabi and Reverend Dr. Temitayo Owolabi. She looks so gorgeous tonight. I'll follow in the footsteps of Bishop Felix. We go to the mother. We... <laughs> Amen, sir. Amen. God bless you. Let's give. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give back to your bosom. He said, the same measure that you give, it shall be given back to you again. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Don't let us give pennies and nickels. Don't let us give, don't let us give. 150 so that we can battle the things and remove some things in the realm of the spirit. As we sow, he remove the poison that is stopping your breakthroughs. Somebody say amen. 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 I don't want to call a specific amount that God is asking you to give, but I want us to give tonight. Could we all stand up? Bishop Fadila, we thank God for seeing you tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a friend of this house. He's going to minister. I don't know whether tomorrow or when, but he had the word of the Lord in his mouth too. Amen. Amen. Welcome back from your great vacation. Amen. 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 God bless. Can we stand? We're going to give. We're going to sow. We're going to sow. Everybody giving something. If you have children here, make sure they sow something into the kingdom of God for such a time as this. My father's Lord. Bye. 
good measure. Press down, shake it together. Four, wonderful, and a thousand for return. Let miracle happen for their soul into this kingdom for such a time as this. Let the rest of the conference day, let it be powerful. Take them from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, and from victory to victory. Bless this occasion, the kingdom first, and bless the big birthday on Sunday night. In Jesus' mighty name, we are good.
I was born, since I was born, but now I am getting old. I have never seen the ball. The Lord is good, for 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 the Lord is good, and His mercy is enduring forever. Yeah, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is good.